Welcome to the Lagrim Reaper channel, where we bring you bone-chilling true stories from around the world. From haunted houses to unexplained disappearances, we have it all. So turn off the lights, grab a blanket, and get ready for a scare. It was a regular Tuesday night, and I was Officer Mike, a man who'd seen the turn of over two decades in uniform. I'd been on the force for what felt like an eternity, long enough to have witnessed my fair share of chilling scenes. A staunch believer in justice, I was no stranger to the eerie corners of our town. My nightly ritual was straightforward and unwavering. It started with a cup of piping hot, bitter coffee at the precinct, followed by a routine check of my gear and a quick chat with the boys at the station talking shop and sharing tales. Then, armed with a flashlight and a loaded service pistol, I'd hit the lonely streets, patrolling the peaceful town as its nocturnal guardian. On that fateful night, my designated route encompassed the outskirts of town, a maze of desolate, rarely tread paths, including the infamous Fraser's End. This path particularly was as isolated as they came, a narrow stretch enclosed by towering ancient trees. Their leafy branches reached over the path, creating an ominous canopy that blocked out the moonlight, casting eerie shadows that danced with the wind. As I guided my patrol car along the path, the tires crunching over the gravel and fallen leaves, I noticed an unusual sight. A pair of headlights pierced the inky darkness, a beacon of uncertainty on this forgotten path. My heart pounded in my chest as I neared the source, an abandoned car. It was an average sedan, its motor still humming an unusual symphony in the silent night. The headlights were on, illuminating the immediate vicinity with a ghostly glow. The driver's door left wide open, swung slightly in the chilling wind, an unwelcome invitation into the unknown. A shiver ran down my spine, not from the cold, but from the growing sense of unease. I slowly stepped out of my cruiser, my boots crunching on the gravel beneath. I radioed the station, explaining the unusual scene, my eyes never leaving the car. Over the years, my instincts had grown sharp, an invaluable tool in my line of work. Right now, those instincts were ringing alarm bells. My heartbeat throbbed in my ears, a staccato rhythm playing out a symphony of danger. The hairs on the back of my neck stood at attention, my palms grew clammy, and a sheen of sweat broke out on my forehead. I was seasoned, experienced, and had stared down death more times than I cared to remember, but standing there, Alone in the desolate stretch of Fraser's End, I felt as raw and vulnerable as a rookie on his first night. With a deep breath, I attempted to smother my growing unease, reminding myself of my duty. A car abandoned in the middle of nowhere was a cry for help, a puzzle begging to be solved, and I was the only one there to hear it. I reached for my flashlight, flicked it on, its sharp beam cutting through the velvety darkness, and cautiously approached the ghostly vehicle. I bent down to scrutinize the interior, my flashlight bathing the insides with a harsh, artificial glow. Everything seemed just as it should be, almost eerily so. The keys still hung in the ignition, the engine purring like a satisfied cat. The radio buzzed with the chatter of a late-night talk show, a grimly cheerful sound that seemed to echo through the hollow silence of the night. The only sign of the driver was a half-empty coffee cup in the cup holder, the liquid inside still warm to the touch wisps of steam rising off it like a specter in the darkness. The seat, though, the seat was as empty as the road itself. Not a trace of the driver anywhere. No signs of a struggle. No indications of an accident. Just a vacant seat and a lingering sense of unease. It was as though the driver had simply vanished into thin air, leaving behind a disturbing tableau. The uneasy feeling in my gut grew, my mind filling with alarming possibilities. My hand hesitated for a moment before reaching out to the driver's side door, pulling it closed with a resounding thud that echoed through the night, a chilling punctuation to the eerie silence. I let out a long, shaky breath, feeling the chill in the air cut through my uniform, seeping into my bones. My head was swirling with questions, my mind groping in the darkness for answers that were just out of reach. Something was wrong, so horribly wrong. And as the harsh realities began to sink in, I realized that this night was far from over. Standing by the deserted car, I noticed it first, 
a ragged path, barely noticeable, cutting through the undergrowth. The foliage was smashed and trampled under what seemed like frantic footsteps, disappearing into the ink-black darkness of the woods. My heart pounded in my chest like a wild drum, yet I knew I had no choice. If there was a chance someone out there needed help, I couldn't ignore it. Holding my breath, I stepped onto the beaten path, each stride heavy with apprehension. The moon, hidden behind a layer of obstinate clouds, offered no solace, and it was up to my flashlight to wrestle with the darkness. The small circle of light bobbed on the ground, illuminating patches of damp earth, crushed leaves, and gnarled tree roots. The dense woods, once familiar, now felt alien, each twisted tree, each rustling leaf carrying an unspeakable menace. The deafening silence was punctuated by the occasional hoot of a distant owl or the crackling of twigs under my boots. Every sound amplified in the silence, setting my nerves on edge. Each rustle of leaves seemed to carry whispers of lurking dangers. Each gust of wind echoed with ghostly wails, and each passing moment felt like an eternity. Nevertheless, I pressed on, steeling myself against the growing dread. The promise of duty and the relentless need to uncover the truth pushed me forward. The air around me hung heavy with an unnameable fear, cold and biting. The chill seeped through my uniform, stinging my skin but it was nothing compared to the icy dread twisting my guts. Deeper and deeper into the woods I delved, the ominous darkness closing in around me like a living entity. The eerie tranquility of the woods seemed to hold its breath, the sense of foreboding so thick I could almost taste it. The once comforting wilderness now seemed like a cryptic labyrinth shrouded in darkness and danger. Time seemed to lose all meaning as the woods closed in on me, swallowing me whole. The only reality was the quivering circle of light from my flashlight, my quickening breath, and the incessant dread in my heart. The path seemed endless, and with each step, the terrifying thought of what I might discover at the end of the trail gnawed at the corners of my mind. Pushing past the final curtain of foliage, my flashlight beam fell upon a sight that still haunts my dreams. There, tied to a gnarled oak tree, was a man. His clothes were torn to shreds, revealing a body marred by angry bruises and dried blood. His eyes, wide with terror, blinked weakly in the harsh beam of my light. He was breathing shallowly, each breath rattling in his throat like a death knell. Help me. He wheezed, each word a painful struggle. His eyes were pleading, crying out louder than his voice ever could. But underneath the fear, there was a glimmer of hope ignited by my presence. I rushed to his side, yanking out my pocket knife and cutting through the ropes binding him. You're going to be okay, I reassured him, trying to mask my horror with a confident smile. When he was free, I reached for my radio, reporting the situation, calling for backup, and urgently requesting medical assistance. All the while, I kept my gaze fixed on the man, ensuring he was still conscious, still alive. As we waited for help, he croaked out his name between ragged breaths. Tom, he whispered. The name echoed in my mind. I knew Tom, a local store owner well respected in our small community. The connection between the friendly shopkeeper and the terrified beaten man in front of me was a brutal slap of reality. Tom began recounting his horrific ordeal. The local gang, notorious for their ruthless tactics, had kidnapped him, demanding protection money he couldn't afford. They'd beaten him, humiliated him, and dragged him into these woods. I could only imagine the terror he must have felt, the agonizing pain he endured, and the chilling realization of being left to die. The more he spoke, the harder it was for me to conceal my revulsion. These weren't just faceless criminals anymore. They were monsters who had made their haunting ground in my home. Their unspeakable act had transformed a well-known path into a nightmarish crime scene. His story delivered in whispered fragments, filled the silence as we waited for the backup. With each word, a sinister underbelly of our peaceful town was being revealed. The gang's heinous crime had left more than physical scars. It had left an indelible mark of terror in our community. As I sat there, comforting a man who'd experienced an unthinkable horror, I couldn't shake off the feeling of dread. The eerie calmness of the woods had given way to an alarming reality each rustling leaf and creaking branch a sinister reminder of the terror that had unfolded. 
the chilling discovery, and the harrowing tale all formed a grotesque puzzle that twisted my stomach into knots. The thought that this quiet woodland had witnessed such horror, that the trees were mute spectators to a man's torment, was horrifying. The fear in Tom's eyes and the pain in his voice were stark reminders of the dark undercurrents running beneath our town's peaceful facade. The deserted car, the lonely trail, the man left for dead. They had all added up to an inescapable nightmare, a nightmare that I was living. I was a cop, but that night, in those woods, I was more than just a protector of the law. I was a witness to an abomination that had taken place in my town, an atrocity I was determined to rectify. The night was gone, but the horror lingered. The break of dawn revealed the true monstrosity of the scene. The woods, now teeming with investigators, hummed with a grim energy as the men in uniform meticulously scanned for any piece of evidence. My flashlight was replaced with the sterile glow of forensics lanterns, illuminating the once serene woods, now a grim crime scene. Tom fought on. His body was a battlefield of bruises and cuts, but his spirit remained unbroken. As days turned into weeks, he started his slow crawl from victim to survivor. His store, once a simple convenience shop, transformed into a symbol of resistance against the tyranny of fear. Tom wasn't just a man anymore. He was a beacon of resilience in a town shaken by terror. My nights on patrol were never the same. Each deserted road and each shadowed corner reminded me of that fateful encounter. A simple abandoned car had transformed into a nightmare that bled into reality and left a lasting impact. But with it came lessons. Lessons about the darkness that lurked in the least expected quarters. Lessons about the strength of the human spirit. And lessons about the twisted depths that humanity could sink to. We hope you enjoyed our spine-tingling stories. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our latest uploads. Until next time, sweet dreams, if you can sleep at all.